Guys, welcome to Fish Hook. I'm Charles, and today I have a special guest. We have a special dish and a special guest. I talked about this on Chatting with Charles last week. I got my buddy here, my cuz, Jonathan. We go back many years, our families, and I picked Jonathan first, because he's my buddy, and secondly, he's an outstanding chef. I know he won't say that, but he is. <laughs> he's got tremendous history in this, and he, we both share the same roots. Growing up in an Italian household, exactly. having five and six course meals. That's right. That's normal. That was there was no there was no quick quick food in our house. Everything yep. was took a long time. But our dish today, and then I'm gonna let John tell you what's involved. We're having fresh caught striped bass that I caught out of the uh, Caney Fork River here in Tennessee. Fresh, beautiful striped bass, and it was vacuum sealed. And I did a video on that once before, I showed you just how good it is. But that's from June of 18. So we're going to have striped bass in the oven with a lemon butter caper sauce. Let me tell you, I had it at his house uh, earlier in this year. I, I pulled a trick on him. I didn't tell him the age of the striped bass. <laughs> I brought it over. We, it was still frozen. We defrosted it there. And he brings it, he brings it out, out of the oven. And I thought I was in heaven. I never had a lemon butter caper sauce and nothing like that. And then he got knocked off his seat when I told him it was over three years old. He thought he, I just caught it. So, well, John, why don't you tell the audience um, a little bit about us and what do we have? All right, so, today? first of all, this guy and I go all the way back to the New York days, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, his dad and my dad are first cousins. Right. So, what does that make us? Cousins twice removed or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and my dad, when he came from Italy to America, actually stayed with your dad. Right. Um, and we've known each other ever since, ever since we were kids, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up in Nashville. How did that happen? Yeah. I don't know. So, so let me tell you about the dish that we're going to make. Uh, we're going to make a, a striped sea bass in a lemon butter caper sauce. Very classic, very traditional, very easy. Um, we've got we've got capers here. We've got fresh butter. We've got lemons, garlic, Italian flat leaf parsley. Very important. I don't like the curly leaf parsley and fresh broccoli. So what do we got? And we, are we oh, we got some quinoa as well. We're gonna make right. a side of quinoa. Right. We did predominantly all. Um, organic uh the garlic this time wasn't organic and the capers are not organic but everything else is organic here uh, i think you guys are going to be in for a treat so we're going to get started prepping this and um just hang tight and we'll be right back all right so we've got uh, two portions of um striped bass fillets and we're going to chop some garlic i'm gonna have charlie juice uh two lemons and um, we're going to take it from there. All right. All right. You're going to have to cut that in half for me, so All right. I'm going to use you now. I'm going to do two lemons. Here we Let's go. Let's do two lemons. Okey doke. Got some great knives. What's the name of this knife again? Yes. Today, I want to tell you guys we're highlighting Heritage Steel out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Graciously gave Jack and I a couple of these knives to try out a set and this is a I believe an eight inch chef's knife I think it's the first time for you John using these knives right? yeah these are awesome knives so and we're using their cookware you guys will see it the uh, pan that we're using is heritage cookware seven layer we went to the um, factory and you didn't know this, John. We went to the factory, and uh, he gave us a beautiful walkthrough, and it was absolutely awesome. And how they made these seven clad, the construction is just so unique, so different than any other manufacturer out there. And I've had the opportunity to cook with this 12-inch uh, pan before. It cooks up instantly and evenly all the way around the sides. So the seven... Um, clad not only are on the bottom but they're throughout the entire makeup of the thing so it's real nice 
So I'm gonna take the garlic that I've just uh, chopped up, mm -hmm. put it in a little bowl, and I'm gonna get over to the uh, to the parsley. All right. Well, we've got two cups of water here that I'm gonna put in the uh, pot get, to get ready for the quinoa. Okay. And like I said, we have uh, Italian flat leaf parsley. You see it in the stores, it's called Rabini uh, Broccoli, and then the word R-A-B-E, Rabe, as, as the uh, uh, non-Italians would say, but it's pronounced Broccoli Rab, and it's absolutely delicious. Oh, that, that smells so good, that parsley. Fresh parsley. Nice, nice. I like a nice fine shop, so I just keep running the knife through it until it gets chopped finely. Get in there, get in there, oh, get in that there. That knife is pulverized. I mean, it's just a great knife, really. You guys don't have to worry. I made sure John washed his hands before he oh, touched it. Oh, that's one thing I grew up with. My mother washed her hands constantly as she was cleaning. Oh, yeah. And that's something that I learned as well. So. And we got chopped up garlic. All right, so we have our chopped up parsley. We have our chopped garlic. We've got our juiced lemon. Mm -hmm. We've got our fillets. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take these fillets and I'm going to lightly salt and pepper oh my goodness <laughs> and we're about ready to start getting these to the pan excellent excellent so we're going to start with the quinoa we've got two cups of water that are boiling right now we're going to add one cup of quinoa so that's half a cup And here's another half a cup. I'm also going to add some salt and pepper. And add a little bit of parsley to that. Looks delicious. I'll add just a little bit of garlic. And then one of the things I love adding is I like, we juiced two lemons. And so I am taking one of the lemons, I cut them up in quarters, and I'm going to put them in the quinoa and fish them out later. And now I am going to bring this down to a simmer. Put the lid on, and that's going to go for about 15 minutes. So we're starting with the quinoa. Um, that's going to take 15 minutes. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, chop up uh, some brooklet ob and put that in a pot. We'll show you that. And then the last thing you want to do is uh, saute the striped bass and make the uh, lemon butter caper sauce because that's only going to take a few minutes to, to prepare. So that's the order you kind of want to be thinking about uh, preparing this dish in. How long do you think, for the audience here, how long do you think the striped bass will cook, you say about a couple minutes on either side? I mean, they're really thin fillets, mm -hmm. um, so you're probably talking two, three minutes um, for the, the fish to cook through. Okay. and for the sauce to, 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 <clears throat> to come together. You'll see how I make it. It's all one pot. Okay. Well, very good, very good. All the links to the uh, recipe will will be in the bottom of the uh, video. We'll have the whole recipe out and the cooking instructions on how to do this. This is really quite easy to do, and it doesn't take that long. As long as you got everything laid out, you can whiz this 
How long do you think it, from start to finish this will take somebody? Max 30 minutes. Excellent, excellent. So it's a good midweek uh, dish you can make yeah. up. Absolutely. Excellent. With great ingredients, I might add. All right, so here's our Brooklyn Ob, and uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the stems off. The wrapping is still on it, it's tied. So all I'm gonna do is cut the stems off. Now, now let me just show you something. Old school. My mother would be would be taking each one of these and stripping off the skin. <laughs> yeah. Right? She'd be doing this, right? She'd be doing this. There's no she'd way be there all the day. she'd be there all day stripping the skin because if you put this in a pot, I don't care how 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 much you cook it, it's gonna be tough because of this tough skin. Right? So she would strip all of the skin off of all of these. Do you think I am gonna do that? I will not be doing it. So we got our Brooklyn up. We've got a special saute pan. Charlie, tell me about this. Pan. Yeah, this is a, again another one of Heritage Steel's beautiful products. It's a five quart saute pan and cover that uh, they so graciously gave us, and we're putting it to good use today. All right, so I'm going to show you the old school Italian way, and that is we're going to put a little bit of olive oil at the bottom of the pan. We're going to heat that up, get that nice and hot. We're going to add a little bit of garlic. Now what I, what I don't like doing, and I know a lot of people don't, is I, I've got to make sure we don't burn the garlic. So we've got our garlic sautéing, and it's right at the spot where I like it. See, it hasn't even turned color yet, and at this point is where I'm going to add the Brooklyn out. same time I'm going to add some water. How much water are we putting in, John? So I've got, this is half a cup. I put a quarter of a cup in right now. I'm going to put some, some salt. This is optional, but I like red pepper flakes. Oh, yes. If you don't like spicy stuff, you can leave that out. And I'm gonna just start turning it. So that water we put in is really an effort to steam it into Exactly, because I'm gonna put a lid on it in a minute here. Oh. Now I just wanna get, I wanna get that salt coated on everything. I wanna get those pepper flakes coated. I wanna get that olive oil coated. Add the rest of the water. I'm going to put the, the lid on. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. See that? I'm going to let that saute. All right, so we've got 15 minutes of has passed. We're going to take a look at our quinoa. So you can tell it's good. See, see how it's... I put a fork through it, and it's just flaking like that. Oh, okay. You see that? There's no water at the bottom, all right? This is done. I'm going to just mix it around. And in a minute, see all these uh, pieces of lemon? I'm going to fish that lemon out when we're ready to dish it. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep the lid on it and just sit it in the back burner. Look at our Brooklyn Ave. Oh, oh look at this, look at this. I mean, if you could smell this, it's amazing. Now you could tell it's not done yet, because I'm putting this, and I'm feeling right here, it's not tender yet. So it's got a little bit of ways to go. But you could tell, you got, some, you got the water, you got the olive oil, you got your red pepper flakes. Looks beautiful. I turned the, um, the heat off on the Brooklyn Ob, I got the lid on it. It's going to continue to steam. 
and continue to, to get soft as we start preparing uh, the fish. Now I've got the saute pan and again another one of these great pans, right? Oh, Is this yeah. another one of those? Yep. Yeah, that's I mean, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed because at, at the house I have all clad. Mm -hmm. And um, all clad is, is just great cookware. But this to me seems better than all clad. I, I don't know. Yeah, so it's I, definitely a step ahead. Uh, I, once you go through the factory, like he took us, took Jack and I, the uh, procedure and how they make this, and seven layers all throughout the entire construction is seven layers all the way up the sides it cooks much faster and evenly all right so i got it on a high heat i've got some olive oil in the pan you can tell when the olive oil is ready because it starts smoking a little bit see that and i'm going to start by putting the fish in the pan oh yeah Now we're gonna let that go for a minute or two. I put the fish in a hot pan and I don't touch it. Because if I start touching it, you see it'll, it'll start breaking apart. It'll get to a point where the crust develops on the top and it starts loosening on its own. So you don't wanna to touch the fish and you see it starts cooking, right? Because it starts getting darker on the bottom. It's about dark about halfway through time you want to kind of turn it. You don't want to touch it. See, if I pull it up right now, it's going to pull, it's going to leave fish on the bottom. You don't want to do that. All right, so just let it go. All right, so you can see like right here, this one is loose, right? This one is loose. This one is not. But right here, this is ready to turn. Oh, yeah. I am not going to pull it up. I'm going to wait for it to loosen. This one? Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it smells delicious. As soon as I get this one turned, I'm going to splash it with that lemon juice. I'm going to put some garlic in it. And then we're going to hit it with the butter. All right, so I got a little bit of uh, garlic I'm going to add at this point. I'm going to add the lemon juice. And at this point, I am going to turn the heat down just a little bit. So we got it. We went from high now we're going to go to a medium, between medium and low. We're going to put two tablespoons of butter in. And I would say that what I'm going to add right now is an aggressive two tablespoons. Probably more like three. So at this point I'm going to add some capers to the dish. So you got your lemon, your butter, your garlic, your capers. You got some great fish that was salted and peppered, sauteed. And the last thing I'm gonna do is hit it up with some parsley. And I like to reduce, now that I got it on a lower heat, I like to reduce it enough to where you see the consistency of that sauce. A little bit of thick thickness that butter has made it a little bit thicker and at this point I'm going to show you how I plate it so we're going to take our pieces of fish
Oh, that looks delicious. All right, so here's our brooklet up. And we're gonna plate this all family style. Right, Charlie? Yes. Is there any other way? <laughs> I mean, as Italians, tell, tell them how, how it came to the table when we were kids. Oh my goodness, there were mounds. One dish with all the chickens. Another dish with a big pot of, of mashed potatoes. Everything came in in large quantities. Did you ever know a small Italian family? Nope. So if you're going to uh, serve this up family style, this is exactly how you would put it out at the table. And then everybody just digs in. If you are going to serve it individually, how I would do it is I would start with a little bit of the, uh, the quinoa. I would then add some fish and put it right on that quinoa. Take some of this sauce. See this right here? And I would drizzle it right on the fish. Just like that. See that? Because that sauce right there is going to soak into the quinoa. And then I would hit it with a little bit of a side of uh, broccoli. Broccoli da ave. striped bass in a lemon butter caper sauce over a bit of quinoa and a side of brooklyn olive. Well guys, here we are. John, I think you did a great job. This is it. This is the finished product. I hope you guys really paid attention to the order of progression, how we did this. Everything is hot. It's ready to eat. It's hot, so you keep talking. I know. I don't want to ramble on. <laughs> you, do, you do the honest All first. Right. Mm. Well, taste the broccoli out. Let me know. Come on. I'm getting very excited over here now. Mm. We did separate mm. plates. I don't believe in sharing. Mm. Not this meal. The quinoa. The nice thing is that sauce soaks right into that quinoa. Wow. Mm. All right. Let's Come try. On. Tell me what you think. Oh, you know what I think. Mm. Oh man, this is ridic ridiculous. That's what it is. It's totally ridiculous. And here's the, here's what I would say about this because a lot of people tell me, how do you do all this stuff? <clears throat> and although this guy complimented me about being <clears throat> a chef, I'm not a chef. I'm a home cook. Don't believe him. Home cook. But it's about simple ingredients. It's about knowing some basics about preparation, just some right. basics and some simple ingredients. One, two, three, four ingredients put together correctly. You can make it taste awesome. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I told you this is an awesome dish. Striped bass with lemon butter caper sauce. Exactly. Oh my goodness. But And don't forget the broccoli dab. The broccoli dab. You gotta have a green, a good vegetable, and broccoli lab is a premium vegetable. And I thought that would go great with this meal, and uh, it hit the spot. So guys, if you're new to, this, to the channel, <clears throat> thank you for watching, and I know you guys have a busy life, just like we do. We took a, uh, you took the time out to uh, see us today, and we really do appreciate that. So if you're new, smash that subscribe button. We'd love to have you be part of the Fishhook family. Hopefully, you're gonna see more of my, my buddy John. Uh, we got more videos coming, and I'm sucking him into this because he's good, <laughs> and I want you guys to get used to some really good Italian dishes. He's been a mentor of me for a long time. Again, thank you again for watching, and we will see you on the next one.